when Papa said he and his Filipino Navy buddies were told, we don't serve brown folk, your kind, in restaurants across the South for over 25 years, I thought he was being paranoid. In July 1993, my fiance Sean flew me to Louisiana to meet more of his family. We were gonna get married the next year. We drove an hour from New Orleans to Thibodeau to meet his cousin Joseph and his wife Annette, also blood cousin, at their family farm. It wasn't a big deal to anyone else, apparently, that two of his second cousins married each other. Cousin Annette made no eye contact with me. I went to the bathroom, and while there, I could hear them interrogating Sean. Joseph, Annette's cousin husband, began talking. So, Sean, what is she? I've never seen anyone like that before. I heard nothing from Sean. I mean, she ain't one of us, that's for sure. But she ain't no nigger either. I heard Annette say from the kitchen's direction, maybe she's more like one of those sand niggers. They come in all different looks. I opened the door to step out. They stopped talking. Sean was speechless. I know he wanted to defend me, but he wasn't prepared for this. He finally said as we sat down to eat, Ella's a Filipino. I corrected Sean, Filipina, American. American. I tried my best to detach, to hover over the situation like I did when I was a child and mom and papa fought, threatening to leave each other, and I had to sit there swallowing tears with my broccoli, beef, and rice. Joseph noticed I was spacing. You never been to a real farm before, huh? He's talking to me. <laughs> no, it's such a large piece of land. How do you get to this supermarket or store where you need something? I didn't want to listen. I just wanted the meal to end so I could run. He sat up, suddenly interested. One thing we like to do, I forgot to tell you this, Sean, from when you come hunting for deer with us in Georgia, is that when our shells get old, we don't like to keep rifle shells for more than a year because then some of them won't work when we try to shoot them. We take the shells, and I mean boxes and boxes of them, the boys and me, to some of the nigger neighborhoods and drop them on the street out the windows of our trucks. Sean and I were visibly stunned by his nonchalant use of the N-word. Sean asked for us, why do you do that? Joseph shoveled a large spoonful of beans into his mouth, answering while he chewed, we figure if we can't out and out shoot them dead, maybe they'll find our shells and kill each other. He laughed with his jaw hanging open, punching Sean in the shoulder, red beans and rice oozing molten from the corners of his lips. Annette got up to fill his plate with more slop. Sean held his breath, and I tried to scream for help from behind my eyes my teeth, my skin. Then in a glitch, Joseph stopped laughing, leaned forward as if he recognized something in me, maybe my horror, so I grabbed Sean's hand under the table. Joseph rested his chin on his elbow-propped hand. I could see the motor oil stains on his curled fingers. He kept staring quietly now, and as Annette returned to the table, he winked at me and said, Oh, now I know who you are. I remember Vietnam. I froze. I don't know the next thing that happened except we were driving back down from Thibodeau to New Orleans. Shocked, I could not react, certain that my spirit was savagely raw, mutilated around the edges, open. And there they were, the holes, exposing the thing, that thing I couldn't name but suspected was in me, dark, hot, better left uncultivated. I get the same basic reaction when, when people hear this. Why didn't you stand up for yourself? Why didn't you spit in his ignorant eyes and storm off? And then I think, yeah, I woulda, coulda, shoulda yelled a snippety doo dot comeback like, what am I? What am I? You're right, I'm not one of you and proud of it. But you have seen us. We've been here shrimping and fishing in your boondocks and bayou since the 1700s. We even fought alongside y'all in the 1812 Battle of Nolens. Come to think of it, mother, excuse me, cousin fracker. You owe us royalties every time you say boondocks since it's the Filipino word for mountain. 
Have a hee-haw time telling your backwater gator wrangling goons you met another type. A rice nigger. <laughs> Truth remains. For two decades, I did nothing. Offered neither resistance nor retaliation. This is how I was raised. One reason Asian Americans are called the model minority. It has taken over 20 years of no reaction for that shock to thaw, to finally see that thing from a lifetime ago, turn tables, turn supernova, turn viral, turn inward, turn black hole. Unredeemed hurt from barely being seen as human evolved into self-hatred, shame, guilt. When they asked, what is she? I realized I was not sure either. No matter how long we have been here, once we began to come to America, we ended up trying to arrive again and again. We are always ing come ing. My coming began with Papa, 19 years old, the 60s, no future in third world Philippines. He was recruited to fight as an American in a war against enemies who looked just like him. The Vietnamese locked eyes with him in the chaos of crossfire, turned to shoot other Americans, and vanished. His theory, they couldn't shoot another little brown brother. Even the enemy wasn't sure Papa was American. Growing up, no school book, no conversation with mom or an auntie told me that the famous Delano grape strike in 1965 that birthed the United Farm Workers was sparked not just by Mexican-American Cesar Chavez, but also by Filipino-Americans Larry Itliong, Philip Veracruz, and 1,500 fellow Manongs and Manangs. Our people were stitched into the hyphenated American landscape, but the patterns made somehow got tousled, torn, like a bed in the morning, history unmade. And we're still trying to leave our mark. Artists on TV and stage, Disney singing voices, and of course, the movers and shakers. I could rattle on for a good 12 or 13 more celebrities. Even though we're the second largest Asian American group in the country, one million alone in SoCal, that's a pretty meager list. Am I part of a visibly invisible people that will continue to keep coming, who never really get to say, we came, we are here? Soon after I left that farm in Louisiana, Sean and I broke up. Race didn't divide us. A study buddy, Southern Belle, in his bed did. I googled them when Hurricane Katrina drowned New Orleans in 05 and was led to a news clip on the O'Reilly factor. The head ER doctor in a New Orleans hospital off duty, Sean salvaged stranded people off of rooftops and motorboated them to safety. This was the same person I loved with abandon. Despite the damage done back in 93, if I was dying on a rooftop, he would not hesitate to bring me to higher ground, no matter how his own family treated me. He would recognize who I am. This healed a part of me. I married a different, tall, athletic, compassionate guy Green eyes, not blue. We engage in colorful discussions over the same things mixed race families deal with. Entitlement, the model minority myth, why I always greet 5011 family members when we visit the Bay Area, reconciling the high holidays with the Christian biggies. It's not easy in this brave new world that until 1967 had a law against white Americans marrying Filipinos, but it's worth it. Our children, 100% hapas, are proof that we're all in. Often when we're out, strangers will kindly congratulate us on our offspring. Your children are so beautiful, such a wonderful mix. What are they? Sometimes a nice lady bends over to ask directly, what are you? My kids duck, get timid. In the minivan, my daughter asks me again, mom, I should say, I'm Jewish and Filipino. My son pipes, American, right mom? both taking mental notes. I drive on, clear my throat, ready to answer.